Morning everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, also HarbachElectronics.com, 203-892-4119. Please like, share, and subscribe. And again, all of the pack and ship info is right on AmpRepairGuy.com under pack and ship. So if you meet those conditions, feel free to just send it right in, but follow the directions to the letter. Or don't please don't send it because it'll get damaged. Any questions, you can still give me a call. I love to talk to people, but some people rather just you know send it in and you know talk to me after it. So okay, so we have an Ameritron AL572. I'm waiting on parts for a couple of amps, but this came in and I can get on it. So uh, I'm going to show you everything I see right off the bat, and then I'll cover the rest when it's done. So first off, it needs a new plate tune air variable capacitor, the C1 cap. This one is bad. I don't think I've ever seen one this bad. Look at that. That is totally shot, and it's actually touching. Listen. So luckily I have some of those, I can get them if need be, but price will go up, but I have some of those in stock at the old price. Plate choke looks okay, needs new straps. You had them taped, but they are just are shot or like super frayed. So I'll replace the straps, the board looks okay. It has the old cap mod that can come out. Looks like it's about to pop. Um, I'll add the gas discharge tubes below the socket. Sockets, well, you only get one per side of the filament under one of the sockets. So, the uh, soft start resistor is fried. So, I'm guessing he had a uh, bad tube, but I'm going to turn it on with no tubes to make sure all the filter caps are okay. They should be They're the newer ones, but you never know. So, these new SO239s, I'll change those. I'll check the dynamic bias transistor right there. I've had a tube flashing and it doesn't have the gas discharge tubes that it, is most likely damaged. So, that's about it for now. So, I will touch base at the end with everything I did and I'll probably show the installation of that capacitor when I'm doing that too so that is a project in itself alright so I will see you guys soon this is a great amp by the way once it's been gone through so definitely worth fixing and I can still get all the parts so not a problem I know a lot of people fear that and uh, you know, tube amps said it before they are way more forgiving than a solid state that's why you know a lot of people love the return business but you fix one of these you make a mistake and you know the customer makes a mistake there's a good chance it'll survive you know uh, so that's why they've been around for so long you know and uh, they'll continue to be here for well you know long time well beyond me so but, uh, okay, so I'm going to get to work, and I will see you guys in a bit. I don't know what's going on with the switches, so I'll check those two, but I feel okay, but maybe she got dirty at some point. Okay, so see you guys soon. Let's show one thing here real quick. So I always take a good PL259. These connectors, these stock ones, always end up failing over time, so I always swap them. It's usually one or the other or both. But, so the top one is the input, the bottom one is the output. Look, see, no grip. Bottom one has, yeah, like no grip, yeah. I mean, more than the top one, but still. <laughs> you want to yeah, push it in and then have force, you know, pull force, pulling it out, and, you know, resistance putting it in. Like, just be able, can't just, you don't want to just slip it in and out. And I've had people say, oh, just then the the uh, clips back no that's like a temporary solution they end up always bending back so I get them from max gain systems good people over there um, the customer sent some tubes with this I have not opened that box yet so I'll check those 
but if it needs tubes, uh, they will come from Pentalabs, awesome company over there. And remember, you get the, the dealer price. I make nothing. I make zero zip, nothing at all. Um, so if I have the amp in my possession, you get the price that whoever sells them and all the companies sell them for it, that's what you pay. I make nothing. And I have them here in stock. They send me uh, 20 to 25 of them at a time. So I test your amplifier with your tubes and your amp goes back with your tubes, tubes in a separate box. So if there's an issue with a tube, happens here. You know, sometimes the China tubes every once in a blue moon will have a problem and it's when you first try it. So rather it happen here than at your house. So, okay. So, uh, I'm going to get to work. See you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. Taking this cap out and the shaft was at like a downward angle. So it was putting pressure on the vernier reduction drive shoot up at the end. Because of that, there's wear on the balls inside of it. So I'm going to replace that. See, you always want to slip the shaft in, leave those, they use like standoffs for the nuts. You want to leave those loose so you can slide it up and down. You slip it in and then secure, you know, the capacitor to the chassis with the two screws. And then, um, Secure the the uh, screws on the uh, vernier reduction drive. I end up I, I usually end up taking out the Allen screws. Maritron started doing it towards the end. Also, I, I'll put in uh, little flathead screws so I can really crank on them. The Allen ones always end up stripping, and I've seen sometimes where they end up backing out, and then you know I don't want to have the you know customer have to deal with that or send it back. So. So, yeah, so, again, it slipped in, screws secured, and then tighten the two screws. Then I end up tightening the, the two standoffs. So, you don't want any pressure at that point, you know, for the vernier reduction drive. So, just a wear over time. And you can actually pull the pressed on nylon piece off of the spline portion of the air variable cap, you know, where, where it's steel, there's a splined portion underneath, so, yeah. Okay, so, I'm gonna go, uh, find one of these, replace it, and then I'll put the cap in. But, sorry. Yeah, and I'm an amp repair guy, not a... That's like bad, bad. So this was probably um guessing ten meters. You know, this may have been used on C B. Not sure, but Close to minimum capacitance. You know, when the plates are fully meshed, that's max. And when they're fully unmeshed, that's minimum. So they're barely meshed when it was arcing. So most likely 15 or 10 meters. So guy may have been on CB. Whoever whoever was using this, this was purchased from an estate, and the customer knew it wasn't working. So uh, it wasn't a surprise. So, but. It'll be better than new when I'm done. All right, so see you guys soon. Stay tuned. So here's the bottom of the tube sockets. Added the two gas discharge tubes, one here and one over here. The uh, screw, I always change the screw from the little stubby short one to a longer one. Because they usually back out and then the joke can fall sideways and get damaged. Sorry, I've got some tools on the bench here. So it was missing the internal tooth brush washer, lock washer, so I installed one. Pressed the socket clips, cleaned them with the ox gold, and uh, that's it. So I'm going to put the cover on and get back to work. See you guys soon. Back with the completed AL572. Customer wants to see it working on 40 meters. So we're on 40 meters. Radio set to roughly 50 watts. One KW slug. It's on PEP. 
Amps going into a bird attenuator dummy load. Meters, settings, amp, audio hello, audio hello, one KW right there. Audio hello, 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 hello. Audio hello, 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 hello. Audio hello, 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 hello. Tet, 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 tet. Reflect. Audio hello, no movement. Okay, so it's working as it should. I'll let it cool off and I'll show you the inside. See you guys soon. Okay, so I'll show you everything I did real quick. Recompressed the coil. Someone had spread it a bit. So that is fixed. Placed the straps for the parasitic board. Replaced 1.01 cap that was damaged. I got rid of that mod they started doing and then they stopped doing. Put the gas discharge tubes under the sockets. You saw that. Compressed the socket clips. Cleaned the socket clips. Brand new SO239s from Max Gain Systems. Here are the old ones. Everything soldered nice, nice. I always forget to say, but I use a wrench on the nuts, so they're they're snug, they're tight. A lot of times they're just finger tight, so they are nice and tight now. So for the forward power meter, the wire wasn't even, it was like intermittent. I'm like, what's going on? Is it a bad meter? They didn't even solder the wire, so that's soldered. Clean the band switch and input rotary switch and the two relays with deoxy gold. That strap wasn't soldered well and it was bulging up, so I soldered it properly. The one that goes to the neutralization bar, or whatever you want to call it, neutralization capacitor. So, replace the air variable capacitor on the plate side, replace the gear reduction drive. Now that's good. So, yeah, when you put those caps in, you want the shaft to slip right in and out. And with it slipped in there, you want to be able to turn the knob with no resistance. You don't want it to move until you snug it up. So, this one was out of alignment also, so that one is now aligned. I loosened the two standoffs they used, slipped it in, and did the whole procedure like I explained before. So, fixed the jumpers over here for the 240 line connection and this one over here was bulging I just didn't like how it looked just want everything perfect so there's the new resistor here's the old one has the proper fuses which are 10 amp fuses 10 amp fast blow you always want to make sure before when you get an amplifier always make sure it has the right fuses in it brand new set of pentalab tubes awesome company awesome customer service and um if that's it I oh, hope yeah, so tight tighten hardware and fixed outer joints obviously this one right here and uh, this thing is good to go so need an amp repaired feel free to give me a call phone number is 203-892-4119 that's 203-892-4119 websites are amprepairguy.com and also harbachelectronics.com please like share and subscribe 73